Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, the concept of sacrificing is to give up something for the sake of something else or for other considerations. In Islam, this concept is to give something of value, to give it up for the sake of Allah, for the sake of the pleasure of Allah, and in hope for the reward with Allah. And there are many things one can give up. One can give up his time, his effort, his health, his soul, his wealth. And is Islam emphasizing and encourage, encourages and emphasizes on this issue in many religious texts in the Quran and the Sunnah. But the two most precious things anyone can give up, can sacrifice for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, are wealth and life. To give up your life for the sake of Allah, to give up your wealth for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, these are the most, two most precious things anyone can give up for the sake of Allah. That's why Allah Azza wa Jal made giving them up for His sake, sacrificing them for His sake, a sign for true faith. Allah says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ إِنَّمَا إِنَّمَا means none but the believers, the believers are none but who are these? They're limited to the following definition. Amanu billahi wa rasooli. They believe in Allah and His Messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thumma lam yartabu. And then they have no doubts about it. About their faith. Number three. Which is the point here. Wa jahadu bi amwalihim wa anfusihim fi sabili Allah. And then they sacrifice their wealth. Notice wealth came first. And it is the case in the entire Quran except for one position where soul comes before, or lives become, come before wealth. Then, they sacrifice, they give up, for the sake of Allah, their wealth and their lives. And then Allah concludes, Ula'ika, those, only those, humus sadiqun, are the truthful ones, are the ones who prove their truthfulness in faith, in belief. Why? Because they gave something as a practical evidence, proving their faith. Giving up wealth for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal has a very lofty rank in Islam. And there is a great reward in return. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this is reported by and Imam Ahmad, and classified as authentic by Al Albani, he said, Whoever gives or spends a charity for the sake of Allah, purely for the sake of Allah, Azza wa Jal, and he ends his life, or his life, rather, his life ends, then Allah will admit him into Jannah. But we have to know that. The one who wants to have that state should be leading his life in this situation. He should be having this as a regular practice in order for him to end his life with it or to be entitled to end his life with it. It's not just once in a lifetime issue. Unless Allah Azza wa blesses certain individuals. And because of this great reward, because of this great, precious prize set for those 
who spend for the sake of Allah, who give up their wealth for the sake of Allah sincerely, the battle is very vicious between us and the devil. Between us and shaitan. He strives seriously and hardly, very hard to prevent us, to set obstacles to hinder us from spending the Prophet ﷺ. And this is one of the most amazing narrations I've ever come across with regards to the work of shaitan when it comes to giving up your wealth. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad and classified as authentic by Al-Albani. He said, no man can spend, can give out charity until he releases it from 70 devils. So the devil, shaitan and his soldiers are taking the matter seriously. See, this is a problem. Shaitan has an objective. He has a goal. And he has set his plan and strategies. And he told us openly, rather he swore to Allah, قَالَ فَبِعِزَّتِكَ لَأُغْوِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْمِعِينَ By your might, I will deviate them all. So he's serious. He's focused. He's planned. He implements the plan. But on the other side, we're so negligent. All it takes from the devil for us to obey and follow is for him to whisper. <coughs> don't do this, we don't do it. Don't pray, we don't pray. Shave your beard, we shave our beard. Smoke, we smoke. Listen to music, we listen to music. Chat with a sister, we chat. Chat with a brother, we chat. That's all he does and that's what we do. We're taking the battle so easy. And that's why we easily get, defeat, get defeated. He, as Allah informs us in the Quran, says, or will say on the day of judgment, rather, وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي I had no authority over you except that I called you. I whispered. And you responded. فَلَا تَنُومُونِي So don't blame me. وَلُومُ أَنفُسَكُمْ but rather blame yourselves. And the higher the reward, the tougher the battle, and the stronger the effort is from the devil. And just for us to know why is this so important for the devil, we need to know the virtues and merits of spending for the sake of Allah, sacrificing our wealth. Too many to enumerate, but here are some. The Prophet ﷺ says, Dawu Mardakum Treat your ill ones by virtue of spending charity. This is reported by Al Bayhaqi, classified as Hassan, sound by Al Albani. Ibn Al Qayyim says, There is an amazing effect of charity in preventing or relieving the person from hardships, all types of hardships including illness. Ibn al-Mubarak, rahmatullah was approached by a man once, and he said, I've had a wound for the past seven years in my knee. I've tried all types of medications. I went to different doctors. Nothing worked. What can I do? He said, find an area where people lack water and dig a well and see what happens. And the man did that, just that, and Allah cured him. SubhanAllah. We all strive to make ends meet, and when, we, when the salary comes, okay, we have to pay the rent, we have to pay this and that, and we start counting and calculating, making sure that input and output are the same, or at least the output is less than the input, so we don't face problems, right? Well, Allah Azza wa Jal suffices you by blessing your wealth if you spend charity. 
in the book of an Imam Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, three things I swear by Allah are true. And the Prophet ﷺ is truthful and he doesn't have to swear. He doesn't have to prove what he's saying correct and true by making an oath. But this is just to emphasize the matter. And one of them he said, charity will not decrease your wealth. It will do the opposite. It will bless it. And there are too many stories on this. If I start telling you stories that I have heard from people direct, we probably need days and weeks for me to narrate them all. But I'll just send, mention one. One brother who used to work in the flea market in Texas. And in the flea market is only the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays. And he used to sell electronics. One day he was, I was visiting him and he told me this story. He said, you know brother, there was a fundraising and they were collecting for a school in a neighboring city. And I pledged, he said, I didn't have money at all on that night. He said, if you collected what I had with me, with my wife, in the bank, at home, all, to, all together it would be a few hundred dollars. He said, that night I pledged $2,500, which I did not possess. And it was a Friday. It was a Friday night. He says, so the next day I go to the flea market and he said, the best days, the best days I, I make over the weekend, both Saturdays and Sundays collectively, around $2,500. Uh, $2, he says, so I started, Bismillah, and I started selling and selling and selling, so the cash register was full. So I started putting the cash in my pockets. Both pockets became full. So I started using the back pockets. Both became full, and that was midday. I decided, that's alhamdulillah enough. Let me just go back and spend the rest of the day with my family. He said, I went back home. And me and my wife, I took out the money, which I collected from the register and my pockets. And me and my wife started collect, uh, counting, and I started crying as we were counting. He said, brother, do you know how much Allah Azza wa Jal provided me these few hours of the first day of the weekend? $17,500. And I knew, he said, I was crying because I knew that this is the result of the pledge of the night before. Barakah, subhanAllah. Barakah, blessing, increase in wealth. A lot of people, when they have a problem, they see people whom they believe to be pious. Or they, they go to their parents and say, please supplicate. I need your dua. Well, charity makes infallible creatures of Allah Azza wa Jal pray for you, the angels. In the book of Imam Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, every new day, every sunrise, two angels descend. One says, Oh Allah, Allahumma a'ti munfiqan khalafa. Oh Allah, bless the wealth of the one who spends. Isn't this great? An angel who doesn't sin, supplicating Allah for you, just because you're spending? But there's a stern warning because the other angel says, Allahumma a'ti mumsikan talafa. Oh Allah, destroy the wealth of the one who doesn't spend. Expiating sins. In the book of an Imam Ahmed, and it's classified as, as authentic by Al Albani, the Prophet wasallam said, Charity expiates or removes sins just as water extinguishes fire. It puts it out. Well, this is the effect of charity on your sins. It's gone. 
You know, on the day of judgment, the sun comes closer to people, as we know in the famous narration, and people start sweating. Some people drown in their sweat, right? And these are different forms of punishments on the day of judgment. Well, the Prophet ﷺ says, and this is in the book of Imam Ahmad, classified as authentic by Al-Albani. He said, the one who spends charity will continue to be under the shade of his charity until Allah Azza wa Jal conducts accountability and judges amongst people. SubhanAllah. You want to protect yourselves from the fire of hell? In the book of Al-Imam Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, shield yourselves from fire even if you spend as little as half a day. So this charity acts as a shield, as a protection against the fire of hell. You want your reward to be multiplied, increased? Well, the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is also in the book of Imam Muslim, he said, whenever a man, a person rather, whenever a person spends a charity which he earned lawfully from lawful earnings because Allah, he, he says والسلام, because Allah only accepts that which is lawful. So if someone is using riba for example, dealing with riba and he takes the riba and says, I'm giving it as sadaqah, well Allah is not going to accept it from you. He says والسلام, whoever spends sadaqah, charity from a lawful earning and Allah only accept that which is lawfully earned then Allah will accept it with his right hand and then increase it increase the reward of that charity and then reason says a date for the sake of Allah one single date what happens he said Allah will receive it with his right hand and increase it just like one of you would raise a baby horse or a baby camel until that one day it becomes as huge as a mountain in reward with Allah. Many virtues, many rewards, many prizes are set by Allah. Some in this life and some in the hereafter. So we need to be keen on taking, the, taking advantage of the opportunity that we're still alive and spend before we regret not spending. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفر الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله رمضان is a field of competition is a race is a period that's limited very short and ends very fast I still recollect when I said we're approaching Ramadan and now half of it is gone. SubhanAllah. But we still have another half. It's a period to compete in virtue and righteousness. It's a period where rewards are multiplied, ranks are raised, and the act of worship of spending charity for the sake of Allah is one act of worship that is very important in Ramadan which needs to be given great attention by us. The scholars said this is because of the honor of that month. So people need to utilize it. And our leading example, our role model, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
No one could match. No one can compete. No one can even come close to this example, to this great man, the greatest man who ever walked on earth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was generous in general. One time he was sitting, he was praying Asr, and as soon as he said Salam, he rushed and passed the rose, was passing over the shoulders of the companions to the extent that they became, they, they started wondering what's going on. So he came back, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after a while, and they were waiting. They said, what happened? You made us alarmed. He said, I remembered that I had a piece of gold which I did not spend out in charity and I hated to delay it, so I had to go out and spend it. Gold is, the, the, the dinar is the current golden currency they used to deal with. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as reported by al-Bukhari and Muslim, and described by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. Abdullah ibn Abbas said the Prophet وسلم, was the most generous person. But he used to be the most generous comparing him to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. During Ramadan when Jibreel used to descend and review the Quran with him. Then he described him, he said, he used to be so generous, so fast in spending faster than a very fast blown wind sallallahu alaihi wasallam now his keenness sallallahu alaihi wasallam to be more generous in ramadan is an indication to his ummah that they need to pay special attention to this period and be extra generous and spend more during it because his conduct is the most perfect. And that's why, uh, as Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullah said, that's why the Muslim ummah need to follow into his footsteps in generosity and spending. Perhaps we catch up. What is the best situation one can spend in the Prophet ﷺ describes, and this is in the book of Imam Ahmad, classified as authentic by Al Albani. He said, The best condition for one to spend in is when he is healthy and poor, hopes to become rich, and fears extra poverty. You're telling me to spend when I don't have money or hardly have any. Yes, that's what he's telling me, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, don't delay it until your soul reaches your throat, meaning it's the time of death. And you start saying, well, give so-and-so this much and this, give so-and-so this much. وَقَدْ كَانَ لفلان, Because it will eventually go to others. It will go to your ears. It will be inherited. And you will have nothing from it unless you have a pious inheritor who would spend on your behalf. But your action will end, will cease at that moment. What is the best type of sadaqah, of charity one can do during Ramadan? In general, when the Prophet ﷺ responded to this, he said, It'am al ta'am, feeding people. And in Ramadan, it's offering iftar to people. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Ahmed, classified as authentic by Al Albani. He said, Whoever gives iftar to a fasting person will get the same reward of that person without his reward diminishing in any way. Meaning the person who's fasting and who broke the fast on your uh, food. Shaykh al Uthaymeen, rahmatullahi alayhi, commenting on this narration, he said, even if one gives as little as one single date for the person to break his fast with, he will obtain this great reward. 
So imagine you feed over the course of a month, say, a hundred people. Or for simplicity, let's make them 90. That's three extra Ramadans in your record of deeds on top of yours. So that's four Ramadans in one. The reward of four Ramadans in one. Just by feeding 90 people. Now one might say, brother, I've already spent in the beginning of the month, I did. Well, listen to this. In the Battle of Tabuk, and this is reported by Ahmed, classified as sound, as Hassan by Al-Albani. The Prophet ﷺ, it was a very tough battle and very little means. So the Prophet ﷺ stood up and started encouraging the companions to spend, to help out. So Uthman stood up and pledged to spend such and such amount and then sat down. Uthman continued to do so. Stand up and sit down, stand up and sit down, stand up and sit down until he radiallahu anhu gave enough to suffice one third of the entire Muslim army from his personal wealth. What was the result of this? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا ضَرَّ عُثْمَانَ مَا فَعَلَ بَعْدَ الْيَوْمِ فَقَدْ غُفِرَ ذَنْبُهُ Nothing can harm Uthman after today for his sins have been all forgiven. So you spend? Well, spend extra. Spend more. Don't you need the rewards? Don't you need for your wealth to be more blessed and more blessed? Don't you want your sins, the ones you committed after you spent the first time, to be expiated as well? Don't you have deceased people whom you might want to spend on their behalf? There are many reasons why one needs to repeat this great act of worship. And the month of Ramadan is an opportunity. So we're all encouraged to do so. Allahumma taqabbal minna siyamana wa qiyamana wa sadaqatina. اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واعف عنا